one. Here it is, my Aero A102 by the Czech uh, producer Savex. An absolutely gorgeous airplane. I have had so much fun with it. So many beautiful flights. Just check it out here. Isn't that gorgeous? But I must admit, I mean, you know how the story goes. Uh, too many projects and I haven't flown this in the last two years or so. So it's got to go. I just realized I can't really fly it anymore. These pictures here that you see, they're at the current uh, eBay auction. That's where you can buy this airplane. These pictures are from this um, magazine. I wrote an article in this German magazine in June of uh, 2009, and I took the pictures then when it was new. So I thought you guys want to know what the airplane looks like right now, and this is why I made this film, so you can check it out. Here it is. This is uh, 3rd of November, 2017, so this is yesterday uh, when I took these pictures, this is what it looks like. And let's check out some details. So for example, the wingtips, you might think that uh, maybe from landing or from whatever, they might be damaged, but no, they are completely all right. Uh, by the way, check out those, this surface. Isn't that absolutely gorgeous? Um, here, the, uh, the cowling, uh, you might think that maybe from vibration or so, the cowling might have suffered, but you can also see how sturdy is it built it is built with a uh, carbon fiber and so on. Here's a bit of a damage from uh, a harder landing. It, um, you might want to rectify that at some point in time. I didn't really care. Here the tail skid. The tail skid um, is uh, spring loaded. Um, and also the underside of um, the elevator where you can see not a scratch, nothing. Many, many flights, many beautiful or not so beautiful landings. This airplane is really quite sturdy but you see not a single damage. Also the top surface here, nothing at all. It's, it's all beautiful. Here's a bit of a damage. Uh, I drilled a hole for the, when I constructed the bracing and, uh, and I made a mistake. I uh, put some epoxy on it and then left it like that. You can uh, sand it down and, and paint it if you want to. I didn't really care. Um, here, look at the surface again, uh, the ailerons. Um, they actually covered the original model uh, with aluminum and riveted it and, and took the bolt from it. I've hardly ever seen anything uh, that amazing. Um, the, the underside with the uh, horn covers. Um, here, the pilot, beautiful uh, pilot figurine. This part here, uh, the bracing, that wasn't part of the original uh, kit. Um, and I added it, but it is quite scale as you can see here is an old picture and it serves a purpose It really takes some of the landing shocks away and makes your airplane even more sturdy. Look at the uh, uh, the brass uh, that I used here to guide um, uh, the bracing and Also here on the top I turned the airplane around and this is a uh, rubber um, the spun around rubber from the inside. It is hooked onto a crossbar, very sturdy, and uh, through carbon rods there. So I added that, and it 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 really makes a lot of sense. It makes the airplane um, uh, sturdier on landing. The airplane is equipped with a Seidel ST770 radial engine. This is an older engine, probably 1985, with the old thin steel rods there, the, um, uh, so not the aluminum ones. It, uh, it's a beautiful old, very rare engine, and it just runs absolutely beautifully. Ah. If you do it right every time, it just comes to life like that. If you feel a bit apprehensive about running a seidel, uh, ask me. I know a lot about seidels. I've had a lot and also have a number of spare parts still that I could help you with in case something goes wrong. So then just talk to me. That'll be good. The airplane and the engine is driven by a, a solo prop, the old original solo prop from Canada. Um, it is a, a variable pitch uh, that you can set to a certain pitch. Uh, and this one here is a 22 inch, uh, these are 22 inch blades, and it's about 22 by 12. 
Um, and if you need assistance with that, with setting it to the exact right RPM, I can help you with that as well. It's quite simple and beautiful and see how it goes. So as you can see, enough power to take off. Um, I've taken the spinner cover off and you can ski, uh, see a scale here. This is uh, a little a wheel here. This is how you adjust uh, the pitch. Um, it's very straightforward um, if you wanted to make changes, um, but you don't really need to make changes, do you? Because I've done it and it works. So just run it the way I did it. Okay, if you wanted to be exact in terms of scale, it would have to have a three-blade uh, propeller. And actually, I do have a uh, three-bladed hub and a little smaller uh, blades, and it would work. I just didn't want to put it on. It would have been 450 grams or something. It would be quite heavy. And also, three-bladed props aren't very, um, uh, very powerful compared to two-bladed. Two-bladed are always more efficient. And while it has power, it does, it's not over-motorized. So check it out here. It takes a little bit uh, to take off. As you can see, once in the air, it uh, is quite uh, fast. Um, I do have that three-bladed plop. If you really want it, um, let's talk. You might want to experiment with it. Here I've taken the cowling off to show you the engine setup and uh, the collector ring. I made that collector ring from stainless steel. And uh, here is what it looked like uh, when I was making it. There's some flex tubes and some distance uh, uh, pieces. And I put that all together. Here you can see a detail of it. I put a nipple on there for a pressurized tank. Really, a Zydel doesn't need a pressurized tank at all. It was more like while I was on it and I felt like doing it, I just did it and it works, but you don't really need it. On the other side, the stainless steel polished exhaust at the exact scale location. Uh, a little interesting thing is that the hole that comes in there that is from the collector ring into that uh, exhaust is just a very little hole. It's only eight mil or so. What that does is it captures the high frequencies inside the ring and lets the lower ones out, which makes for some awesome sounds. Listen to this. So I guess a bit of sound tuning was the idea here. Uh, what you can see is also the cables coming from the glow plugs leading uh, to the back and they lead to the um, onboard glow heater system. And here it is, a shot from the inside of the fuselage, the Glow 7 LP. I've been using these Glow 7s by Microsense uh, quite a bit. They're awesome uh, little electronic devices, work really well with sidles. Here, look into the uh, belly, there is a one liter tank, that's about 34 uh, US ounces of fuel. Uh, way too much, you can probably pl fly like 45 minutes with it or so. I made the braces from wood that are completely covered in uh, epoxy resin, so they're absolutely fuel proof. Uh, look inside of the fuselage, here in the front you see it says glow balancer. This has nothing to do with lipo balancing. It is a system that distributes the current to the different glow plugs in a differentiated way. Less to the top uh, plugs and more to the bottom plugs. The idea is that sometimes the bottom ones get a little more grease and therefore burn uh, uh, less well. Um, you don't really need the system at all, however, it gives you an absolutely amazing low RPM uh, smooth run. Listen to this. So that's about a thousand RPM. When I was setting the airplane up, I talked to Savix and I asked them about the side thrust and down thrust and then I said, oh, forget about it, just bolt the engine on. Not true. Look at this, there is side thrust in here that are made with these aluminum parts of different lengths that I had specially made for this. And there is also some down thrust here. This is the correct setting, it works. 
I'm flying Futaba in this, and uh, for the batteries, I put in a uh, Emcotec uh, DPSI Micro with two batteries. You need this little magnet uh, to turn it on. And what I did is here, it's not really scale, but I thought it was funny to put it uh, in the eye of the lion. So there it is on. And these are the deflections, can't go more there on the elevator, otherwise uh, the rudder will bind, but that's plenty, it's enough, it works. The LED for the onboard glow system I put on the engine bulkhead there, and now when I turn it on, you can see there it comes. I'm going to turn it off again because I didn't charge the batteries. But this way, you can even, when there is bright sunshine outside in the cowling, you can see that there is some action and that it actually starts, so you can start your engine. Inside the fuselage here, the receiver is a fast receiver. It's going to stay in the airplane. If you don't want to just chuck it out, put something else in, but I'll leave it in there. Here are the uh, charging cables. I put them with balancer like that, so you can charge from externally while leaving the batteries inside. For those of you who don't like to leave batteries inside a model, well, you're going to have to figure out something else. I didn't really mind it so much. Um, when we look inside of the fuselage, you can see uh, the batteries are underneath uh, the, the pilot here. Uh, the lower one is a 6001 cell for the um, glow system, and the top two ones are uh, for the RC system. So there you have it. These are three and a half mil gold plugs for charging the onboard glow battery, 6001 cell, because it's one cell, you don't need a balancer. Here view inside of the fuselage backwards with the servos for rudder and elevator and the push rods. The airplane comes with these wing bags that are made. I put these uh, rings in there so you can strap them to your shoulder. Same thing for the struts and then you can put those inside of the wing bags. I'm also going to give you this little box with uh, comes very handy with all the bolts and, and tools that you need. Okay, folks, there you have it. Uh, this isn't really a winter project. Why? Because it isn't a project. It is ready to fly. It is bind and fly, really. So all you have to do is uh, turn the radio on and, well, obviously before that, uh, program it, but there isn't really much to program, is there? Uh, rudder, elevator, aileron, normal throws. I can help you with that if you... Uh, want me to and then you just go flying and i know i know winter is coming at least here in europe uh, so maybe this is not the right time to put it on ebay but hey show it to your wives to your girlfriend to your boyfriends to other people who are still looking for a gift for you or give it to yourself for christmas isn't that a nice idea uh, please do make me some decent offers that would be great all right Tends to. Oh my god. Nope. No, I'm not very proud of that landing. No, I'm not. It's, uh, but it shows you how sturdy that airplane is. Uh, better to come in low and then really flare it out and it lands beautifully. Beautiful night. Yeah. Beautiful. Well, work on those landings. <laughs> Thank you.